and thank you all for joining us today. A big thank you to folks who has joined us at Reactor. Today, we will be doing .NET MAUI workshop at Learn at Reactor. And my name is Rashmita. I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor, Bengaluru, India. But before we start today's session, please read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together. So please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout, and we do encourage you all to participate. With this, I would now like to call Nish and hand over the floor to begin the session. You, Nish. Hey, thank you, Rashmita. Hey, everyone, good morning. Fantastic. So we have online audience as well as we have in person. So you can see that. Like, let's pull, let's pull up the screen. Hybrid. Let's see how we're going to do hybrid. So this is the first time we're trying it out. Something like this. You know, we are trying to uh, create a presence here in Bengaluru and as well as you know to all audiences there or joining us online. So depending on where you're joining us from, please let us know because we are excited to know where all you're joining in from. So like just like yesterday, add in comments. And then we should be able to pull those comments in as well. All right. So this is a hands-on workshop. So Ms. Nish, I work on the PM, I'm a PM on the developer communities team at Microsoft. And uh, I technically uh, manage a lot of things on microservices and things like that. But I, I was also a Xamarin developer evangelist for a long time. And I'm very, very excited to talk about .NET MAUI today. All right. So before we uh, get into the details, I really want to thank all the amazing people at Azure Developer Community. They brought in many cities. I mean, we were looking at how do we get to larger cities uh, and also the smaller cities. And then Azure Developer Community leads came up, and they brought in so many people uh, in. So this is streamed live, uh, and hands-on workshops are happening across 60 cities in India. And also, since we are uh, you know, streaming online, so everyone who is joining from the online side of things, uh, please, this is a workshop. And uh, please stay back once we, once we show you how to do the first set of modules. Please stay back, and we'll be able to take some questions. Um, install Maui in your in your machines, and then you know work with us. I also want to specially thank all the amazing people at uh, IIT Madras, uh, Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, and Pune User Group. These people also came forward to help put together this event and watch parties and uh, and hands-on workshops. So you will have also have some community leads to help you with your workshop if you are stuck. All right, shall we get started? All right, let's talk about .NET. Uh, so .NET today is a unified platform where you can build anything and everything on in the uh, you know in the, in the, in, the, in the developer space. Like you can build for mobile, which we're going to look at today. You can build for web. You can build for cloud. You can build for IoT gaming. So having just the .NET and C sharp skill sets, you can build technically anything uh, right now. So if you look at .NET, it has the base class libraries. And then under that, there, there are infrastructure components like runtime components, compilers, languages. And also, you have this beautiful tool sets like Visual Studio, VS Code, uh, and things like that. But today, if you're, when, you're install, when, you're, when you're working with MAUI, especially on the, on the side of if you're building Android and iOS applications, you will have to customize your Visual Studio a little bit to make sure that you have the MAUI workloads. So we can go and build, the, build our first app. Some of us are building the first apps for the first time. So let's go ahead and do that, too. All right, so with .NET MAUI, we are targeting multiple platforms. So that includes Windows, uh, Win UI, Mac OS Catalyst, and iOS, Android, iPad OS, Android, uh, te technically everything. So are using single C sharp code, you will be able to build native applications across all. You can also build hybrid apps with MAUI and Blazor. Uh, that's something which we are not going to go into details today. But since if you're hanging around here doing the workshop, we'll be able to go through that as well. All right, with that, let's start with the MAUI workshop. And what I'm going to do is, because we are streaming this live and online, uh, sorry, and, and in person, what I did is I went ahead and recorded this entire workshop. Uh, so you can wait and watch the entire thing and get started, or you can you know, do it side by side. But I encourage you to get started uh, after you finish, after we finish this video, because it's about 40 minutes long, and you get an idea about what exactly is happening. And after that, we will go into the questions and things like that. And especially for the online audience, uh, the uh, the suggestion is that you know you go through this video, and right after that, if you want to stay back and do the workshop yourself, we will be hanging around here, and then you can ask those questions. All right, With shall we get started? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to figure this out. Let's be just. Uh... Okay. 
All right. Today to learn about .NET MAUI. We're so excited that you decided to spend the Saturday to learn about uh, everything .NET MAUI. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, what I'm going to do is open the browser and browse to the link that's already shared uh, either in your comments or something you can see it on the screen scrolling here. So that's the uh, CSC, which is a cloud skills challenge where you can sign up for. And this is very, very exciting. So for now, I have just signed up for this. So if when you join here, you probably will see a link to join the course. There is already leaderboard because we've been talking about this. And you can see that there are like 34 participants right now as of recording this video. You can get started with me right now and uh, and complete it uh, and it's going to be pretty easy all right let's get started uh, learning this so i'm going to click continue learning and this is where you can see all the courses that's there to learn about dotnet maui right so let's create a class platform app with dotnet maui which is the first module that's something which i will be doing it today and you can continue with the same pace and then complete the rest of the modules and then and, and complete this challenge so which is very exciting all right, so what are you going to do is get started with this one. Create a cross-platform app with .NET MAUI. So I'm going to click on this. First things first, you need to read the prerequisites. So one of the prerequisites here is we need to have Visual Studio 2022 with MAUI workload installed. I'm going to show you what that means. And then familiarity with C Sharp and .NET. Now for this course, I'm going to do everything on Visual Studio for Mac. It's up to you. If you have a Mac, you can continue to do that on Visual Studio for Mac. The advantage you have is you can also execute the iOS apps as you do. Uh, if you're executing on Windows, the advantage you have there is you can execute the Windows applications there, uh, which is, uh, it's up to you. I mean, whatever you have, it's gonna work um, seamlessly on the both. And to get started, uh, to start with Visual Studio and the MAUI workload installed, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've remotely connected to my desktop here. So this is my <clears throat> desktop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the Visual Studio installer just to show you how to get uh, installed. So you go to visualstudio.com, download the Visual Studio. I'm using the Enterprise 2022 preview. You can use a community edition. Uh, if you are brave enough like me, you can use the preview. Pretty much work, everything works on this. So, so far I have had a great time. So I'm just going to stick to the preview version. Um, so while you install, you probably want to pay attention to the uh, the MAUI workload. And this is the one. So it says .NET multi-platform app UI development, where you're going to build Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac apps uh, with a single code base in C Sharp. So we're going to look at that uh, right now. So make sure you check on this and then install. So once done, it should it should install everything that's required for you to get started. So if you are right now uh, executing it, make sure go and modify the installation or have a fresh in installation, but make sure you select this one, right? Uh, and similarly, when you're installing Visual Studio for Mac, you will also be thrown uh, with a UI, which is gonna uh, talk about what all needs to be installed and make sure you select the uh, adopted MAUI uh, there too. All right. So let's get back to the module right now. So in this module, it's going to cover a lot of things like introduction to what .NET MAUI is. It's going to talk about describing the MAUI architecture. And then we're going to do some exercises about creating the first .NET MAUI app, adding visual controls to .NET MAUI app and, and so much more. So this is very exciting. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to click on the introduction. So basically MAUI, as I mentioned, it's all about building native apps. And uh, with MAUI and Blazor, you can also build hybrid apps, which is like having a web browser, running your uh, UI controls and running your logic uh, like C Sharp uh, in its own runtime. But uh, with .NET MAUI by default, it actually uses the native platform. It's just that it's gonna use a single uh, code base to do it. All right, we have covered all these things. So we're gonna look at the next one. What exactly, how does MAUI architecture really look like? All right, basically this is where your app code is. And then .NET MAUI is the underlying layer. But under the hood, it also has .NET for Android and .NET for iOS and .NET for Mac. 
and then it has a common base class library which is shared across and that's what gives you the ability to kind of reuse .NET across iOS and Android. But under, uh, right below that, there's a mono runtime which is uh, built on top which is working with the Android specific APIs and iOS specific APIs and Mac OS. Technically, insists if you ever find a need to write something very specific to Android, let's say if you want to work with NFC or something which is platform specific, you can be sure that uh, you can pretty much write the same code that you probably would be writing in Java or Kotlin in C Sharp too. And those are platform specific, it's called platform specific code. And similarly for iOS, you can also follow the iOS, uh, uh, like how iOS apps are written in Swift or Objective-C, the similar uh, APIs uh, can be used as well, right? But the main reason you're going with a code base, with a single code base is that you increase the reusability, you get we build apps faster uh, with the uh, .NET MAUI, right? And also when you're running Windows applications, it runs on the Winati uh, underhood, which is basically the Windows 32 runtime. And uh, with Mac OS Catalyst, you can also write the Mac applications too. And we can try that because I'm just working on Mac. So we can try that as well today. All right. Now, one of the things that in MAUI we have is the UI framework, which is the XAML. If you are new to XAML, it's like, it's called extensible application markup language. How does .NET MAUI work? Well, let's look at the UI framework. I mean, it's a good practice to have your UI be more descriptive and it's kind of like platform neutral language. And that's the reason why people go with something like XML or HTML. So in this case, it uses XAML. If you are from uh, someone who has written Windows applications and things like that in the past with WPF. You probably are familiar with XAML, but if you're not, it's okay because it's just pretty easy to kind of like understand and then get up on that. Uh, so we will also briefly look at how things are working with XAML as well. So if you look at here, there's a button and then you can see these are the properties like text. So when you write click me, basically the button will have click me text written in that. And uh, it can have other things like clicked. So that's nothing but an event handler. And then there is like horizontal options like, you know, center and things like that. And so how does, how does when you write button in XAML, how does it transform into native buttons in iOS and Android? Um, this is how it is working. Like button will have an interface called iButton and um, there will be button handlers written uh, independently within the platform for let's say iOS, it uses the UI kit, uh, UI button and uh, you will, it may use a Thank you so much for and uh, which is UI for native button that and uh, it can have other things like clicked so that's nothing but an event handler and then there is like horizontal options like you know center and things like that and so how does how does when you write button in XAML how does it transform into native buttons in iOS and Android? This is how it is working. Like button will have an interface called iButton and um, there will be button handlers written uh, independently within the platform for let's say iOS, it uses the UI kit, uh, UI button, and uh, you will, it may use a UI button for a, you know API from Mac Catalyst. And similarly, uh, in, in case of an Android, it goes and uses the app compact button and similarly on Windows, it just goes, it uses the button from windows.ui.xaml.xaml. 
dot controls, right? So that's how it writes. So when you write button in XAML, it's kind of invoking the native button uh, under the hood, right? So that's how pretty much every uh, UI is being used. Uh, you can also have your own UI if you want to, uh, but that's how uh, things are baked in right now. All right. <clears throat> now, since uh, for .NET MAUI development, we looked at this already. Uh, you need to go check this .NET MAUI platform um, uh, to be checked while you install, uh, which is great. All right, so this is something interesting. This this question on knowledge check. Um, so let's try and answer this. The question is, which environment provides the runtime support for a WinUI 3 application? So we, I think it's, it's right here. I have been, not been reading this, um, but I encourage you to kind of like read through these uh, and understand what MAUI is. Um, so basically, it has the um, .NET for Android, .NET for iOS, and iPad OS, .NET for Mac, and v WinUI 3, or leveraging the Windows app SDK, uh, and then there is base class libraries and things like that. So obviously it's gonna be something related to Windows, which we right now we, what we have is a Win32 runtime. So that should be the right answer, but you know you can go and check it out. Um, and there's, there's also the mono runtime. So mono runtime is, is a runtime very specific to iOS and Android and not specific to the Windows. And this WinMaui, I don't think there's anything called WinMaui, so it's something to keep you confused, I guess. And then the next question is, which markup language can you use to lay out the UI for a .NET MAUI application? And that is, uh, obviously that's the ML. All right, let's check the answers now. <clears throat> All right, that's correct. So this is great. So go ahead and, and uh, check these things and complete this knowledge check. It's gonna add some points for you. Um, all right, so let's, the next unit is creating a .NET MAUI project in Visual Studio. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, so I'm gonna open Visual Studio uh, on Mac and create a new project here. And uh, as you can see that, you know, I have a couple of them. So I'm gonna choose multi-platform and then choose the app and I have the .NET MAUI app. I can also choose a .NET MAUI Blazor app. As I said, like if you want to write some hybrid apps and you want to share code between the uh, Blazor web and the Blazor mobile apps, you can do that. Uh, for now, I'm going to choose the .NET MAUI app, click continue, uh, use the target framework .NET 6, which is the current framework. So I'm going to click on continue. And here I'm going to call it as uh, Learnathon MAUI. Um, we can provide a name that just fits really well for you. Create, and then this is going to create a basic structure for us. Uh, it's asking to take a survey. You should definitely take a survey and tell us what, what you feel about Visual Studio for Mac um, and things like that. Um, so if you look at the about Visual Studio, what I'm doing, again, I'm using the preview version, which is 17.4. Um, you can totally use the 17.3, which where the .NET MAUI support has come in. Um, um, so if you want to upgrade to previews, you can also install the regular Visual Studio and then just choose the update channel. So this will tell you uh, what are the updates available and then you can update it if you want to. Um, and this is very similar to the Visual Studio uh, that you find on Windows. Uh, the difference is the U is, again, this is also a Mac app. So it it just looks like, looks and feels exactly like a Mac app. So even the key bindings are slightly different. You can also stick to Visual Studio key bindings if you want to. Uh, but if you are a Mac user regularly, then you probably want to use those uh, command and options and things like that that you are probably familiar with. Um, so right now, if you look at this, this is a Learn uh, MAUI project, and I have the main MAUI program.cs. And if you look at this, if you know ASP.NET, if you're coming from ASP.NET, you would probably have a similar approach seen there, which is we use the builder pattern and then we use uh, use MAUI app and then and then you can see that fonts dot add font uh, so it's basically if you want to use some custom fonts within your app which is very specific and you want those fonts you just you know fonts dot add you add to the fonts dot add font and if you go to the platforms uh, sorry uh, and then if you go into the resources here 
in under the fonts folder and this is where you provide those fonts out there. And similarly, if you look at the app icon, there's SVGs and things like that. I mean, if you're like me who worked in Xamarin before, like 10 years ago, uh, we used to have these icons which were specific OS with different uh, sizes and Androids used to have different sizes and they all have to be maintained differently. And now it's much more easier because they're all SVG files and you can define it there. Um, and similarly, you can also reuse those images and things like that in your apps, right? Um, this is splash file and also styles. Like you can also, if you have common theme across all the um, all your apps in iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac OS, uh, you can also have common styling and theming that can be written uh, in XAML again, right? All right, so, <clears throat> all right, from styles, um, you can also see the other ones like this app.xaml, this app shell.xaml, this main page.xaml. Uh, we can we can we can take a look at the the description that's written here, so which goes and explains what exactly is app.xaml file. Um, it's where you probably want to you know link your resource dictionaries, like in the stylings that you created. That's the XAML file. Uh, it defines the application resources and things like that. And it, every um, every app.xaml or every XAML can will have a code behind file, which is the C sharp file that you want to write. And similarly, it has app.xaml.cs. And if you look at here, it talks about like common methods that the application lifecycle methods, which are like on start, on resume, and on sleep, um, like these are common things that you want to do it with, uh, within, the, um, or within all your apps. Let's say if it's going into uh, sleep mode, then you probably want to say a few things to cache or something that uh, then you have a common method called on sleep that you can do. All right, so this app.xamlcs, let's take a look at that one. So it's here, if you go down, it talks about the app.xaml, uh, on start, on resume. So let's take a look at this. So if we go to app.xaml and within the .cs, so you can see that it doesn't have on start. So what you can do is you can do an override and say on start, and, and then you can, you can write what you want your apps to do when it starts up, right? Probably you want to initialize a few registers and things like that so that your app starts working uh, according to your business, right? All right, now there's app dots, app shell dot XAML. Uh, so this is a main structure of the .NET MAUI application. Um, so it kind of like the shell is where it kind of like starts. Uh, it says, okay, what is your main page? It kind of like then goes and initializes uh, those pages that are specific to your platforms and things like that, right? And then from here, it is here we say that in the the main page is what we are routing to. That's the shell content, and and now we go to the main page. So that's the uh, page that you uh, we have here. So we go to the main page of XAML. So if you look at this, is pretty easy to understand. So you have the content page, uh, and it starts with a scroll view. Uh, that's because the overall uh, page that it's going to start off with, you want to be scrollable. Um, then you start with the scroll view, and then now you're saying it's a vertical stack layout. That means everything that you want to place inside, every content that you're going to place inside, it's going to be vertically stacked, and you provide spacing and padding, which is uh, similar to like HTMLs and things like that that you know. Um, then there's like vertical options, like you can do center, left, and things like that. And then, then we're going and adding image labels, buttons, and things like that. So if you look at image has a source button, .NET button, uh, PNG picked up from the uh, the resources folder, right? Um, and then there are a few labels. You can see the font size that you set. Then there's a button and in, in the button, if you look, it's the text which says click me and then there's a clicked and the clicked event handler, it's called on counter clicked. So, if I, so technically the place where you will have an event handler is in the code file that's where the C sharp logic that you want to write and if you look at that's the on counter click that's there it's basically another uh, if there's a button and every time you click the button it's going to increment by one and it is going to take the counter button dot text that's the um, that's the idea thing let's see what it is so it's the yeah it's the name X colon name that's what you give in XAML to identify this button and then dot text right now it says click me so when you every time when you click it basically increments the number. All right, so semantic screen reader out here, it's basically, it, it is from the uh, accessibility. So it kind of like helps the screen reader 
uh, announce the text. So if you look at this one, this comes up from the Essentials library, uh, so which uses those platform API use accessibility features and things like that. So they are common across. So the, you always get these kind of APIs that's common across all the three platforms as well. And if you do not see anything, you can also go ahead and build it. Uh, it's pretty much the same as we saw in the button case. There's a button, I button, and then you write button handlers. Similarly, if you are writing platform specific, then you create uh, that platform specific class, and then you implement the handlers for it, and then you access them through the interface and uh, for cross-platform, you kind of like have your own class that represents what you mean. Okay. Now let's go back and just see what else. Did we miss out anything? We talked about the Maui program.cs. We, we talked about how the fonts are arranged. And then... Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for reflecting you. Open. Uh, did we see the XAML? Like, oops, we can, we can see that. Code, then this is a place within Android you can go and and write those within that so if you look at this main activity.cs this is how you probably would write it in Kotlin or Java and that's exactly the same so you use this using Android and everything related to the Android platform would be available to you here the way when you're using dotnet Maui most of if you're writing business applications and focusing on the key stuff for mobile then you don't probably don't require it uh, but sometimes you you really want to so you have those options right so for ios you have this app delegate info playlist and in android specifically let's say if you look at the manifest file so this is the file where you kind of like ask for permissions and things like that so that's right here and similarly if you are looking for windows you have windows related ones here right so there are like platform specific things now if you open the project learn and and then if you go into the edit project file You'll see the how this is being how the target frameworks are being used. So let's, let's slightly expand this. So if you look at this Net 6.0, Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, and it also has a condition if it's running in Windows, and it also adds another platform, which is Windows. And then if you are using a Tizen, you can uncomment this and then it will also be targeted for Tizen, right? And based on this, if you look at here, you can also see that you know. It is targeting these platforms. So I, I'm, since I'm on a Mac, it has these iOS simulators out here, which can be uh, and run directly. I also have an Android emulator, which is Pixel 5. Uh, I can also run it on my Mac. Uh, that's the Mac OS Catalyst. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at all of these things. And uh, let's go in, let's just see if there's anything else that has mixed out. So we talked about the project resources. Yeah, we have a few things there. This is all done. This is great. This is great, this is great. Before going to the knowledge check, what I wanna show you is, let's go and check how this looks in Visual Studio, right? So I'm gonna open uh, Visual Studio, let's go do that. And probably if you're if you are working with Visual Studio, this is what you might see as well. So I'm gonna create a new project right here. So there's .NET Maui app, because I've been using this. So if you don't see it, you can just choose all platforms and then filter by Maui here, and then you'll see this document Maui app, click next. And then uh, in this case, I'm using Maui app four. That means three times I've tried it before to make sure things are working. And uh, so I can click on create, and this will go ahead and do exactly the same thing 
what we just here connected. And you can see that, um, so this is fine. What we didn't do is we did not execute this, right? So let's go ahead and execute this. Uh, I'm gonna use my Windows machine here and start while it's doing on this desktop, we can go back to our Maui here and then go to the iPhone, let's say iPhone 13 and run this app on the iPhone simulator. Um, oh yeah, so this is ready, which is the Windows app. So if you click on it, click me, and you can see that this is what it shows up, uh, which is great. So if you want to run this on Android, you can also go and choose Android right here. You can also connect to a Mac and then and, and work with iOS simulators. So I can also have Hot Reload here. So you can just click on Hot Reload um, and then run this and then kind of like make changes. And you can see that that change. So there's also XAML live preview. So when, you, when you're making changes, it will just show up here. So hello world. And I can say learn, learn a thon. And you can see on the right, it just changes. And not just that, if you take the Windows app out and that also reflects the change, which is gonna speed up your uh, you know, creating UIs, right? All right, so let's go and see what's happening on the iOS side of things. So that's the app that's executed here. So when I click on it, you can see that uh, it's the same app that's running here. I can go to my Android emulator. In Android, I've already deployed. If you click on the learn, and this you can see that uh, it's the same thing. So just that piece of code, it's all working, which is great. All right, so now let's go to the knowledge check and see what are the questions that we have. It says, in which method of the application object should you create the initial window displayed by the app? Um, you tell us. So go ahead, whether it is A, B, or C. Right now it's the radio buttons here, but maybe you can answer this in your YouTube uh, comments. Type in A, B, or C. Um, which one is it? So, um, application object should you create the initial window so that would be in the constructor and where do you implement the logic for an event handler for a control such as clicked even for a button so that's we already saw it's the code behind uh, in the xaml description no we do you implement the logic in the code behind file of the xaml page that's the right one and it's not in the app.saml.cs. Let's click on check your answers. Great, so that worked. That's fantastic. So let's go next. Let's go and actually this is the exercise I was just showing you uh, the file new projects uh, on both, but this is exactly the exercise that you really need to go and uh, create your first .NET MAUI app. So in this case, uh, I have this create MAUI app and we are gonna create something called a phone word. And so they ask you to name your project as phone word, but just to save some time, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, whatever we create right now, we can go and edit those things uh, in there. Uh, we'll build and run these things. We already did this. We had hello world working and these, uh, we also looked at the hot reload. Uh, did we see the XAML reload on the iOS? We can, we can kind of like, oops, we can, we can see that one. So if you go into this and let's say run this and where is it? Okay, XAML hot reload. So once I enable, it's ready. Now if I go into the main page.xaml.cs and say I want to change, okay, let's move this a little bit. If I want to change click me to click me twice and just say save, and you can see that it's immediately reflecting even in the iOS simulator. Um, this is great because you don't have to stop and debug. You can go and edit the entire UI here, fix all those errors like margins, padding, font sizes, that's all you can just make that happen. It's so awesome that we are able to do that right now. Okay, let's go back here in the learn module okay it talks about android emulator okay android device manager this is something which i haven't shown you but if you go to the tools and if you go to android if you go to the android device manager 
this is where if you do not have an Android emulator, this is where you are creating it. So right now I have something running, but you can go ahead and create a new uh, Android emulators here. So make sure if you're running on Intel or AMD based CPUs, so make sure you select the x86 and 64. Uh, on my MacBook, I'm using the ARM64, so I'm gonna use this in, in case of Mac OS, because that gets the better benefit of the, the new Apple Silicon, so. All right, so that's with the device managers. So let's go back. That's all cool. Everything is cool. Now let's go into creating some visual controls. I think we talked briefly about all these things. What's an application class? What's a shell? Pages, views, controls and layouts. There's vertical stack layout, horizontal stack layout. I mean, there's a lot more that you can actually learn. Like if you want to do a horizontal stack layout, sometimes you want to place items this way. You can, and uh, okay, this is a flex layout. It's very similar to stack layout, except that it enables you to wrap the child controls it contains if they don't fit in a single row or column, which is, again, I mean, it's up to you what UI you're using and go ahead and use these layouting system. Very nice uh, for a, everything that's kind of common that we have seen across all the mobile platforms, you can, you can achieve those UI layouts using these. And then if you go in, this is all counter clicked. So I think this is something which we, all right. So, so here's another thing that, so this is the way you write XAML. And if you're someone who's not a fan of writing XAML, you don't want to use XAML, you don't want to learn, learn another UI uh, layouting structures and things like that, you can pretty much write everything in code. And the way you write is uh, you, you inherit from say content page, and then you write scroll view, vertical stack layout, and add them accordingly into the content properties. Uh, at if stack layout, they'll have children properties, so you add them so it gets stacked into that. And um, all right, so again, another knowledge check which of these is in the layout type in .NET MAUI? Talkable layout, absolute layout, stack layout, grid. Again, write in comments and let us know. We know that stack layout do exist. And grid is one of my favorites because of being from the WPF world and silver light world. It's kind of like cool. So grid is there, this flex layout, flex layout, stack layout, absolute layout, but we didn't see anything called dockable layout. So I assume as of recording this video, we don't have anything dockable layout in .NET MAUI. That should be the right answer. And the second question is, again, you can go ahead and type your answers right now. You can say it's the second question, whatever the answer is. What is the class used to create a screen in .NET MAUI? Hmm. Is it screen? Or is it content view? Or is it page? Or is it grid? Interesting. A screen probably is not sure if it's a page or a content view. Do we have something called page? So I think they're all content page. The content page just typically displays a view. Okay, this is just nice play of words. So I'm just gonna go with page and see. Okay, awesome. Not bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna unlock this achievement was right. Page is a base class of content page. Okay, that makes sense, right? I wasn't sure if we had something called page. All right, so unlock achievement. Oh, wait, module is completed. Oh, that's because I executed the other one already, but let's, let's get to the next one, which is writing a phone word app. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to create a phone word app, which is nothing but, I'm, I'm pretty sure not everybody here are familiar. Basically, if you go into the phone and you have these numbers, let me see if I can get my, so these are the numbers, right? Um, so if I were to, let's say, uh, type, so if I had to say someone that, you know, type in hello, so if you just go ahead and type in, H E L L O and it is going to give you this number, right? So that's the phone word up. So, so sometimes when you to make it easy, someone will have to call you 
let's say 1800 and whatever is the fancy name uh, company name and then that just gets um when you when you type in this big number so we're going to build an app which technically is going to um convert that right so so we have the translation logic so i'm going to copy the phone word translator uh and then put this here create add new file and call this as phone word later okay and just rename sorry replace everything there which basically has namespace as core it has a phone word translator class uh, it has a two number, a starting method where you put this wrong string and it's going to convert and give you the number that you need. All right, we don't have to look at the logic here because it's just a sample. It's going to convert the number. But what we're going to do is we're going to build the UI now. So we have this crawl view. So what we go is go to the main page of XAML.cs and let's go ahead and uh, kind of delete everything from scroll vertical style layer. Um, so let's go this and then go back. Okay, let me disconnect this. We don't need Windows right now. Or maybe we need it. Oh, let's see. Let's move this. Yeah. So what are we building? We need a label. We need a vertical stack layout and then a label. Uh, so we're going to create a vertical state lay layout. Again, I'm just going to copy paste. Just makes it easy. And go in, create a label. So that's um, which says enter a phone word, and we have font size set to twenty. Great. And entry is um, it's nothing but a text box. So you can have password entries and things like that. So, oops, um, using the wrong. So let's just align a little bit. Um, so it says phone number text, and you can see that by default it has one triple five, and then net Maui. We'll see how we use the converter logic to convert this. And the next set of things is buttons. I'm just going to copy these buttons as well. Okay, so we have a uh, button, say call button, and we have clicked on call. So in, in button, this one, translate button, it has a function called on, sorry, it has a event called on translate and on call. So which is, we need to write them in the XAML.cs, in the code behind. So let's go do that too. So there's main page, content page, and I need, the on translate so i'm going to copy this logic go to the main page xaml.cs and i don't need counter click because i just deleted all the previous ones so i'm going to just keep translated number and you can see that um okay it doesn't detect phone number or text let's go back to the main page of xaml um Oh, for number text. Okay, that can be an interim error. We'll figure that out later. Okay, so let's go and write these logic too, which is enabling the call button. So you don't want to enable the call button when translated number is not created. So I have these and so why is this giving me error? So let's go and build this thing and make sure that there's nothing that's blocking me while that is building. Let's go back. Oops, did I go wrong? Oh. Uh, oh yeah, we don't have these uh, methods. So it's gonna give the error for sure, which are the on handlers, which is on call and things like that. That's fine. That's something which we're going to add it right now. So there is this on call um, method. Okay, let's go here. 
So there's this dial. So I'm going to copy this and, and I'm going to explain this to you. Just give me one second. So I'm going to call on call method. So we need this on call method to be available for the XAMLs text to call. So there's on call. So here's the on call method, which basically has display alert, which says it's going to ask, do you want to dial this number, uh, which is a translated number? And then we're going to check if it's supported. Then we go and um, make the call. Before that, we need something else. We need something else. We need something else, which is on translate. Yeah, so we have the on translate. We have the on call. So let's go ahead and build this and see if that should fix the problem. Build started. Okay. Okay, we're good. So we can ignore these warnings. That's fine. Uh, probably to do with preview. So I'm going to click. Uh, so let's go and check Android here. We click Android, click on the run and what it's going to do is it's going to go and deploy this to my Android emulator right here and watch it all right there it is so there's an enter phone where it's a label and we have the text box uh, which says one triple five net Maui so if you click on translate you can see that the call button gets enabled and then it has this one hyphen triple five and converted that into the number, which is great. Now, when I click on call, now I want you to pay attention to this one. We're using something called as phone dialer, which again is, uh, it's something under the API, which uses communication.phone dialer. So if you have phone dialer supported, sometimes you don't have phone dialers. That is when, for example, if you're using an iPad with no call facilities, or if you're using simulators, it won't have those facilities, right? So if if only this is supported, then it just goes and opens uh, that and then sends that number, right? So in this case, an Android, if I just say call, it says that's the display alert that you see here. Do you want to dial this number? Would you like to call this number? If I say yes, and you can see what's going to do idly, in an ideal world, if I say yes, what's this? Why is this not working? Oh, interesting. Oh, yes, great. And this is why we need to read the documentation carefully because we never asked for the permissions uh, for this in Android. So we need to go and ask those things about manifest files. I'm just going to quickly copy these queries. Uh, stop this thing. Go to the uh, resources, I guess. No, platforms, Android, manifest file. Here, I need these permissions. So if I do this and now just go back to deploying it to the Android, I'm pretty sure this should get fixed. So these are intent, uh, so you kind of like explicitly write those things in your manifest file so your uh, app knows that these are some things which the users agree to um, give you access to, right? So translate, click on call, if I say yes, and you can see that it opened up the, the Android's platform call. I don't know what this call, um, dialer, phone dialer. And then I can just make a call if you want to. I don't know if it's even going to work. It's an emulator. Why are you working? I don't know. But it's something which you can try, right? All right. Now what I'm going to do is let's see how this is working in iOS. is not going to work because it doesn't have the simulator. I uh, want to support calls. So let's see what I do with a Mac OS. So if I just go and run this, um, the same code in a Mac OS, let's see what exactly happens, right? So it's using the Mac OS Catalyst, which is the API is similar to the iPad OS. And then uh, it kind of like you can run these things here in Mac as well. Okay, so it's the uh, Mac OS, if I say translate, and if I say call, it gives you those native Mac OS alerts. 
do I want to call this number? If I say yes, and you watch this, it's, it gives me another alert on the top right corner. Now, because my phone is also connected, I can make this call directly and it is going to use my phone to complete it. All right, I think we're done. I think we just did. I mean, if you are excited about Windows, you can go ahead and execute them in Windows as well and try it out yourself. All right, so we are done. This is the first module and it is amazing. We got this through. This MS Learn documentation is pretty cool. It explains a lot of things. As long as you set it up right, you have the emulators right, rightly set up, you should be good to complete this uh, task. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, so I hope that was great because I kept all my mistakes within the video. I could have edited it out, but I thought I'd leave it there so that you know you guys can know that where things are going wrong so you can fix it yourself. Uh, just give me one second so we can fix the stream a little bit. Okay, great. So we're good. All right, so <clears throat> I hope you liked it. Uh, so are you ready to get started? Executing it? Yeah? Okay. So for online uh, audiences, we'll take some questions. Shall we take some questions? Okay. Let's take some questions right now. Is it possible to have two different main pages based on some condition? Example, first time users see login page and users who login information is already saved. Yes, so all those things are doable. Uh, it's, it's on the shell page. If you see, that's the, that's the starting point. So you can actually make those changes uh, in that. So... And the next question is, how to convert Xamarin Forms project to Maui? Do we need to do from scratch? No, you don't need to do it from scratch. We, in fact, we have an um, we we have eShop on containers, one of the apps that we, you know, translated uh, to Maui, and we have documented the steps. And that's something which we'll share it in the YouTube link. You can take a look at it. Uh, pretty much the XAMLs are backward compatible. That's what I heard from James yesterday when we did the talk. So uh, you don't have you can reuse a lot of things and. Um, uh, it's it's pretty much doable, yes. Does Maui has reusable components? Yes, uh, there is also a huge amount of third-party libraries as well out there. Um, so um, you know there are I think Railkit and other there are other companies which are Telrix and Infragistics. They're all having controls, so you can use their, those as well. And other than that, there are also I mean basic functionality level whatever platforms it has all the three sites. Um, you you do have those supports as well. <clears throat> With Maui, do we have to use shell? Yes, the answer is yes, because shell will be the starting point. Uh, and then you'll have a shell content view, and then uh, it'll navigate from there. Any other questions from the live audience? When I say live, in-person audience. No questions? OK. Yeah. The thing is, I actually created a few of the Maui apps before. And found out that uh, like some of the native controls, like scroll view and collection view, were uh, a little bit lagging. So I tried to implement those with uh, handlers, but uh, I could not go any more about how to use handlers. Yeah, so what we do is, OK, the specific question is how to implement platform specifics and be great at it. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at it uh, during the workshop now, OK? okay. Cool. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, I think there were. OK, and, and thank you so much, everyone who answered the questions when I was getting stuck at the uh, the knowledge check. So I see a lot of questions that has come in as comments. So that's great. Um, how to get the URL of a file in the shared resources folder to store a string? OK, I'm not I don't have the answer handy with me right now, but I think I'm pretty sure you can you can get those things from the uh, from a documentation where you on the resources section, just check how like for example, the fonts are accessed that way, a similar way. So uh, it will you will be able to access the same way. Um, Maui Blazor, Maui native only, or two things can be used in a single project. Yes, two things can be used in a single project. So <clears throat> Maui native, when you say, I mean everything is native. The difference in Maui Blazor is it's the web controls that is actually rendered in the in the web browser, but all the C sharp related code are also running in the runtime uh, natively. So you get a better performance there. So uh, it, it it supports both, and you can use it in a model where you can uh, you can mix it together. The best e example for that is .NET Podcast app. If you go to GitHub.com slash Microsoft slash .NET hyphen podcast, uh, you have a you have an you have an entire demo on how to do that. Okay. 
what else is it is it good time to migrate uh, last zamin project to mavi yes it is absolutely you should uh, we have we are ga now the tools are ga so you should definitely start migrating to mavi yeah uh, these are uh, apis near your basic examples available for windows But I couldn't see uh, any uh, API uh, scenarios based uh, examples available for Android or Mac. Or What do you mean by APIs? Again, platform specific scenarios. Yes, yes. You don't have enough in the, this one. Yes. Okay, so we can take a look at that. Again, it's the same. I mean, even if you go to the Xamarin documentation, you probably see some platform specific thing. The only thing is the way you implement is same, but the approach, the the way that it will approach in Maui would be slightly different. Okay, so you can definitely look at take a look at that documentation if you think the Maui documentation does not have enough. There. Otherwise, today we can we can take a look at few things. Okay. 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 So what we're going to do for the online audience? So the the next steps here is to help you execute this workshop. Whatever we did, you can start with the workshop. Uh, we are running a cloud skills challenge. You can complete the challenges and unlock your achievements. Um, so for online audience, uh, we will play some sl just slides to tell you where we are in the workshop, and we'll also keep the camera for the uh, the Bangalore workshop team uh, on. Um, if you have any qu questions, keep coming in, dropping in the questions. We can take once, uh, to, you know, maybe after a little time, we can connect back and then take those questions as well. Um, for now, so I'll encourage you to go back, uh, use the learn modules. Uh, it's aka.ms/learnatreactor. Go through those. Um, this workshop and and try and complete them and uh, that would be amazing yeah thank you so much for joining with us today to learn about .net play my screen not the video uh, just to open the screen Okay, just we're just trying. Just give us one minute to figure this thing out. Um, so we need to share the screen. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, let's get started. So we're going mute here and play some some music for the online people, so that. You can continue executing and keep dropping in the questions, and we'll take them a little later.
All right, everyone joining online. Uh, thank you so much for staying back and then executing the module with us. Um, so I'll take some questions and then uh, we're going to close this in another 15 minutes. So you can continue to execute the modules, you know, tag us at, with, uh, at Microsoft Reactor and let us know when you complete it. Um, so let's take some questions right now. The questions on, let's see, uh, the questions on is the video being put after the event? Yes, the same link will have the same video so you can come back and see it. Um, can we, okay, let's take this one. When Maui workload support, uh, I, I guess the support for Maui workload in VS for Mac, that's already there with 17.4. Uh, so if you don't see it, just update to preview version and you should be able to see that. Um, the next question is, can we reuse NuGet packages from existing Xamarin or WPF package uh, project in Maui? The answer is, uh, it depends. If it's if it's targeting the stand, .NET standard li library, you can. Uh, if it's not, it needs to be retargeted to, uh, if it's a native one, it needs to be retargeted to net iOS and net Android, and then it should be able to work. Um, the other questions on size comparisons, I um, I don't have an answer to that. I would suggest you to, you know, maybe ask this question in the discussions channels of github.com slash .net slash Maui, uh, and probably uh, the PMs on the Maui teams can help you there. All right, so what are the next question? Is there a Maui certification, official certification? Uh, so Microsoft Learn modules are that what we have right now. Um, so those were recorded and you will have achievements shown there. Uh, I don't know if there are any future plans on the certifications. I probably will check with the team and, and probably can let you know later on tweet or something like that. Um, Okay, so Sydney from Zimbotech. Um, so yeah, I hear you, the, you are having challenges with the resources folder. Uh, have you made sure that the file has been tagged as embedded resources? So if not, try making sure that. I would send you a, a similar discussion that's happening on the github.com.net slash Maui. Uh, so it will be in your comments. Just go ahead and check that if that's gonna answer your problem, if not, uh, I would encourage you to just start a new discussion, you know, telling the exact problem, and hopefully uh, we can get all some community members who have already done that to help you with that. Okay, um, the questions on is Maui faster than um, other platforms? I mean, I don't have answer to that again. Uh, it is definitely high performant, but I don't have the comparison right now, but I would uh, say, I mean, you can try it for yourself, make, try making some apps and try it, or, you can check with these discussions in the community so that someone who would have tried with this comparison can help you with that. Okay, how flexible is will be Maui when the next year uh, it's unnecessary it's necessary to upgrade the current code into more recent OS support like an Android. So Maui releases are planned, the major releases are planned according to the .NETs. Uh, so you'll see .NET 6, .NET 7, .NET 8. So the, every every release will have a new version. Uh, but I don't think that should stop you from um, you know supporting the most recent OSs in Android and iOS. Uh, probably things if there are new th new things coming out, it may be in preview, which you can definitely try. I guess. Okay. So that's it for now. That's that's all the questions that I see here. Uh, if there are more questions, feel free to ask, and we are going to hang around for another 10, 15 minutes, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. All right. Uh, and if you are online folks, if you are already doing it, just tag us with Microsoft Reactor and tell us that how far have you come through this. That'll be helpful for us to know. And uh, all right, and keep keep doing the challenge.
All right, so it's time to close the event today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. It really, we really appreciate it. And this is the first time we are trying to do a hybrid event so that we can keep both the audiences engaged. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please continue com completing the uh, exercises there. And uh, me, before we go, I want to also, you know, thank to the entire Azure developer community hosting in these multiple cities in India. Uh, around 60 cities are participating with us today, so which is great. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, yeah, please tweet to us and uh, let us know how it went. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.